So I thought I would go through a different way to debug your assembly program using something called the data display debugger. Now underneath it's still going to be using GDB, it just is going to be a graphical uh, program that interfaces to GDB. So you need to install it. To do that, it's just sudo apt install ddd. There we go. And now it's installed. There are a couple of different ways to start the data display debugger. You can start it after the activities menu. And you can add it to your favorites. Or you can just start from the prompt. It's set up by default for debugging source code. There's a big source window, and then there's a GDB console at the bottom. We'll see how to fix that in a moment. Let's open a program. I'm going to open my solution to the bin add problem. And nothing is displayed in source because there is no source. I'm going to set a breakpoint. at the print binary function. Great. So you can do everything you can do in GDB down here. You just have these additional panels to help you see what's going on. So we probably don't care much about the source window. Let's close it. We might like to have the machine code window. Let's open that. When you open that by default, you'll get this little panel over here that's helpful for running machine code. If that gets closed, don't panic. And it follows the other window around. Another thing that's nice to have is registers. You can get that off of status. And there we go. By default, it just displays the integer registers. If you click all registers, it will display the floating point registers, the control registers, but all should really be in quotation marks as we've discussed before. So now we have a breakpoint set. We can go ahead and run the program. Now if I just click run, it won't do what I want. Let's try it. And you see nothing happened, except I got an error message that said expected exactly two integer arguments. So really to run it, I have to go back to the prompt and say run and then give it a value, let's say 19, and then give it a second value, let's say 17. Aha, now I've hit the breakpoint, and you can see a bunch of stuff has been filled in. Up here I have the disassembly listing. It stops at a boundary that's somewhat unclear. It, it Sometimes it's the end of the next basic block. We'll talk about basic blocks later. Sometimes it goes past that, uh, but it it typically only shows you a section of your program. But here in the registers, you can see that we have all the registers set up. So let's go ahead and execute this little function. Step i takes one step. Next i takes a step, but proceeds through subroutine calls. So we'll do step i. Now we're in the next basic block. And you see this one has a little loop instruction here that's going to branch up to here at the top. So it's not quite a basic block because a real basic block would stop after a loop, but it, it tries to do its best. So here we're going to move 30 into AL. So there's, there's RAX. Right now it holds the value 17. Let's take a step. And we can see, sure enough, that's changed to hex 30 or 48, which is the ASCII code for a zero. So the next thing that's going to happen is going to shift RDI right one. RDI holds our value. And you can see RDI right here. It holds 13. Let's do a step. And it's been shifted. And you can see RDI now has the value 9. So we uh, divided it by 2. And the remainder went into the carry flag. So since the remainder for this division by 2 uh, of... Uh, of that value would be one, we should see the carry flag set. And in fact, we do see the carry flag set. So then we add with carry AL and zero. So AL is going to just be holding this 30. 
Adding zero to it won't change it, but adding the carry flag should make that into 31. We take a step, sure enough, now it's 31, which is the ASCII code for one. We're now going to move that into memory. Uh-huh, let's do that. And it's moved into memory. How do we know that? How can we see what's in memory? So let's go to display, hold it down until this little menu pops up, and then we're going to choose other. And what are we going to display? Well, we're not going to display main. We want to display some stuff. So we want to display what's in buffer. But we have to tell the system what buffer is. So let's say that buffer is a 65 byte character array. That's our cast. But that's probably also not going to display what we want. It's going to display it in octal. Let's go ahead and tell it display it as hex, or we could display it as try to display it as characters. Let's display it as hex. So this instruction says display as hex, buffer, and cast buffer to a 65 character array. Not a string, because it's going to be full of zeros at the start. You won't see anything till the very end. So because we're filling it from the we're filling it uh, from the end to the beginning. So let's go ahead and display that. And what happens is it opens up the data panel, which you can also open up with uh, view data window up here. Let's, let's go ahead and, uh, and shrink it a little bit to make some room. And it shows the data in a compressed form. So right now we have zeros and we have 63 of them followed by a 31 in hex, which is the code for a one, followed by a null terminator right here, zero. We haven't actually explicitly set it yet, but right now that memory contains zero. So let's go ahead and take some steps and see what happens. Aha, uh -huh. so we put another one in here. We put a zero. And then we put another zero, and then a one. One, zero, zero, one, one. So that's 16, 17, 18, 19, that's our value. Everything else is going to end up being zeros. So let's take some steps, and we can see that. And you can see that this number up here is decreasing. There's just 56 zeros, 56 zeros, followed by 57, 58, 59, 60. 61, 62, 63, 64 total digits will be in here when we're done. How can I get to the end of this? I want to, to run until we get to the very end. So let's set a condition. Let's set a breakpoint. So maybe I'd like to break it when RCX becomes 2. So now I have a new breakpoint set, and the breakpoint refers to this address, and I'm going to stop at this address when RCX is equal to two. I just think I stop whenever that happens. I have to stop at this address when this condition is met. So up here on source, I can open breakpoints, and I get this little window, and it tells me I've got a breakpoint, I'm going to stop at this location, but I'm only going to stop if RCX is 2. Let's go ahead and continue. And sure enough, I stop right here. And I look over here and I see that RCX is in fact 2. And I've stopped. And let's take a look at the data window. And the data window doesn't seem to have changed that much. And that's because all these these hex 30s, these zero characters, are repeated. There are 57 of them. And I have these last two to fill in. So let's do that. So right now, RCX is 1. And you can see I filled them all in. I have 59 zeros, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64 characters terminated by by a null. I'm about to do the loop. 
RCX is 1. I'm going to decrement RCX. It will be 0, and the loop will terminate. So I take step I, and you see RCX is now 0. And in fact, I'm at the instruction past the loop, where I'm going to go ahead and null terminate. It's already null terminated, but it's doubly null terminated now. I'm going to take the address of the string and put it in EDI. And so here is RDI, and I put the address of the string in there. And then I'm going to take a step and call put S. And if I step, I will go ahead and enter the function for put S. If I wanted to skip over that, I could just say next I. Let's go ahead and finish this function and return back up and we get this guy. And then we continue on and we hit the breakpoint for print binary again. So that's some of the basics of working with the data display debugger. It's really just an interface to GDB. There's nothing you can do with the data display debugger that you can't do with uh, GDB. It just gives you maybe a nicer way to package uh, some of the data and some of the output. Hope this helps.